Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. Tigers. They are the largest living cat species. As apex predators, they hunt and prey on wild boars, deers, and zebras among others. Usually, humans are not part of a tiger's menu, but there are circumstances that lead these beasts to prey on humans. In this episode, we are going to share how a single tigress turned out to be a man-eater, killing more than 400 people. This is their horrifying story. Viewer discretion is advised. In 1903, a female Bengal tiger wrecked havoc in Nepal as she began her killing spree. This has sparked great fear and unrest among the locals in the area, being constantly hunted by the uncertainty of when she would strike next. Unlike other predators, Bengal tigers don't normally hunt down their prey. Instead, these tigers have this cunning nature. Discreetly, they follow and stalk their victims first. Then, out of nowhere, they strategically and very swiftly attack their prey from behind, usually biting the neck for an instant kill. This type of attack is commonly known as the stalk and ambush method. This man-eater attacked around 200 people to death in Nepal. Hunters have tried to catch her, but she evaded every attempt. Unable to afford any more lives to be lost to this single tigress, the people in the villages asked for the army to finally help them with this big problem. Far from the tiger's usual prey, humans are much easier targets since they don't run as swiftly as other prey, such as zebras, deer, and boars. Furthermore, Bengal tigers have speed records of up to 40 miles per hour, so one can just imagine how extremely easy it would be for tigers to outrun humans. The only time that humans have a fighting chance at predators like tigers is only when armed with guns. Thus, the government in Nepal formed an army group dedicated to hunting this tigress. The army was able to drive out this tiger, ending her terror in the area. But as the Nepalese celebrated her much-awaited retreat, the tiger managed to make her way to India and continued to hunt humans for food. In India, another 200 people became fatal victims of this lone tiger. Her 434th victim was a young girl who went to a ravine with two other women. They went there to collect some leaves to be used in setting up fire and probably for some other purposes at home. Upon reaching the ravine, the three women did not waste any more time and immediately climbed up the trees to start working. Each of them plucked out leaves from the trees one by one with the help of a knife while happily talking with each other. They each brought along a basket with them to fill up with leaves they could gather that morning. The young girl's basket got full first, so she was the first one to climb down the tree. As she descended, out of nowhere, and in the blink of an eye, the tiger attacked from below pinning her foot to the tree. She yelled frantically and quickly tried to climb back up while trying to kick the tiger's head off of her. But the tiger was too strong. It grabbed her from below, pulling her down onto the grass, fiercely bit her throat, and instantly killed her. The two other women hopelessly screamed for help up the branches of the tree as they watched their friend getting devoured by the man-eating monster. It was 1907 then, already four years since this man-eater first claimed the life of its first victim. The death of the young girl proved that tigers can attack in broad daylight, contrary to the villagers' belief that tigers only make their moves when it is dark. The deadly tiger has also progressed in its strategies over the years. It began to widen its scope of its attacks, focusing on the much bigger area of Champawat. Oftentimes, the tiger would cover up up to 20 miles from one attack to the next. Things went bad to worse, as the man-eater knew very well how to identify easy targets the children, and the women. Paranoia has filled the villages in the entire Champawat area, as people began to lock themselves down inside the safety of their homes, especially when the tiger has just claimed another life close by, fearful of the monster lurking around and waiting to devour them. It was then that they put up a reward for anyone that could kill this beast and put an end to the terror it has brought on so many people and villages. Quite a number of hunters took on the challenge, but every one of them failed to finish off their elusive target. Not until Jim Corbett stepped into the scene, a known tiger hunter, although a little less experienced in terms of hunting man-eaters at that time. He set out to do the job of finding and hunting down the Bengal tiger, the culprit that already claimed 434 innocent lives at that point. 
Jim responded to the call with one condition, to recall the reward. First, because he did not want to put himself at greater risk getting mistakenly hit by a stray bullet from other hunters. Second, unlike other hunters, he did not want to do it because prize money was at stake. Jim first arrived in a little village called Bali, a neighboring town of Champawat. Secluded and seemingly abandoned, it has been four days since villagers have not gone out of their homes out of fear that they may chance upon the cunning beast. She was seen roaming between Pali and Champawat during that week, most probably on the lookout for her next victim. Upon hearing their horrifying and tragic stories, he asked one of the villagers to accompany him to where the young girl was ruthlessly attacked. But what they only discovered at the scene were some bones left of the young victim and a few of the tiger's footprints. No signs of the tiger anywhere nearby. News of her 435th victim in Champawat reached Jim, so without further delay, he set out for Champawat. Upon reaching the village there, witnesses of the tiger's latest attack recounted how the beast dragged a woman along into the woods, carrying the woman by biting around the back of her neck. The woman was still alive as she was being dragged, screaming desperately for help, but the villagers were too afraid to follow the tiger's tracks and save the woman. While staying in the area, Jim was able to communicate with a mute woman whose sister had been one of the innocent victims of the tigress just a few months ago. She was able to follow after the tiger and even beg that she be killed instead of her sister. However, the merciless tigress disregarded her and made its way into the thick forest as soon as he was done with her sister. Jim spoke to the villagers to gather more information about the tigress, making sure he is well prepared for their actual meet-up. Then, out of nowhere, a man came running fast toward him still shaking from the scene he just witnessed minutes ago. As he was still catching his breath, he reported another life had just been lost to the tigress. Wasting no time, Jim went into the woods with a rifle in his hands. His senses were heightened as he prepared himself to come face to face with the tiger anytime. This time, Jim was able to follow the tiger's trail and could see the tiger from his peripheral vision just stalking him silently. Jim knew that it was only a matter of time before the tigress would make her ambush. In an area totally unfamiliar to him, and with the sun already about to set, he knew that he did not have a fighting chance as soon as darkness would set in, especially since he was in her very own turf. Instinctively, he decided to go back to the village and get back to the drawing board. Realizing that he should not be putting himself in an unfavorable situation, he gathered the villagers and discussed his new game plan. The next morning, for the first time in a very long time, everyone seemed to be thrilled and excited, looking forward to seeing the much-awaited downfall of this tigress. They went to a nearby valley and gathered on the hillside. Soon after, the villagers started to shout their hearts out to catch the attention of the tigress and cause her to come out of the thick forest into the vast open area on the hill across where they were. Jim was lying in wait for the tigress to come out into the position he needed the man-eater to be, aiming to have that perfect shot at his target and finally putting an end to all her terror. The tigress did come out of her turf, however, much to his surprise, stopped 150 yards short of the spot he aimed for. This left Jim with no other choice but to quickly move to another position so he could make a sure shot at the wild tigress. He positioned himself hiding behind a tall grass waiting to catch sight of the tigress again while the villagers continued to make extremely loud, often over loud noises. A little while later, the tigress came out of the bushes and immediately, Jim aimed and took two successive shots. The first one hit the back of the tigress, just near its butt. However, the second bullet missed it as the tigress quickly ran away with a growl after getting hit by the first bullet. Jim grabbed the chance and hurriedly followed after the tigress. He eventually found her on a rock seemingly weakened by the injury she obtained. However, as soon as she saw Jim, the look in her eyes changed in an instant. Her fierceness suddenly reawakened, and in a split second, Jim saw the tigress launch itself towards his direction. With quick thinking and presence of mind, Jim also locked his eyes on his target. He maintained his position and decided to face her head on. As soon as the tigress was close enough for a sure kill, Jim pulled the trigger. True enough, the bullet pierced through the tigress, instantly killing her 20 feet away from where Jim was, just before her wide mouth could land on her hunter to devour him. Weak and dying, the tigress tried to slowly climb up a small rock, then breathe her last. 
The much-awaited news reached the villagers on the other side of the valley. Ecstatic and full of relief, they all rushed to where Jim and the tigress were. At first, because of the overwhelming vengeance that filled their hearts, the villagers wanted to brutally slice the man-eater into pieces. But Jim talked them out of it and eventually, after gathering themselves up, they gave in to his plea. After everything that happened, Jim got to take home the man-eater's skin as his very own trophy. And not only did Jim take home his game, but also the villagers no longer needed to hide in their homes out of fear of this monster man-eater lurking outside. 436 deaths is quite a number, but if not for Jim Corbett, it could have been worse. Thank you for making it this far. If you'd like to watch more of these horrifying animal attacks, click on that video on the left. Or if you want to check out other horrifying stories, click the video on the right. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get updated on our weekly uploads. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.